Hi, this is Lauren Olson from World Centric. I'm the Zero Waste Manager, and we are just waiting for Riza Christian, uh, the founder of Sustain Magazine. Like, she'll be joining us any moment now. If you're just joining us, um, my name is Lauren Olson. I'm the Zero Waste Manager, and Riza is here from Sustain Magazine. Hi. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, how are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, doing pretty good. Yeah, kind of getting used to home life. I don't know about you. Yeah, I definitely am. Um, definitely, obviously, you know, I'm here in Austin, so I'm taking advantage of, you know, walks and nature, but yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, working from home is can be difficult, but it's, you know, it's doing good for our planet and for the people. So I'm glad that, you know, everyone is hopefully staying safe and doing well during this hard time. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so Risa, um, we're doing a series. Um, tomorrow marks the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. It's hard to believe. Uh, so all week we're speaking with leaders such as yourself from various organizations about social and environmental issues around the world. Um, so our goal is to promote the idea of Earth Day every day, not just April 22nd. Um, so today we're talking with you, Riza, is am I saying that correctly, um, Christian? Reza from, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're the founder of Sustain the Mag, um, which is a digital sustainability publication and inclusive space for eco-conscious people. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah. Um, and thank you again for having me. I love World Centric. Um, so yeah, Sustain the Mag, for those that don't know me, it's been around for two years. Uh, we are based out of New York City. I mean, I'm personally here in Austin. I moved here recently, but my team are based in Brooklyn where we founded um, our publication. And it really was just a group of us in college like it was myself who became more aware of sustainability during my college years and I really you know wanted to start a platform that was similar to like something of other media publications such as like Refinery29 or Man Repeller that people you know it was very popular and you know buzzing that these online publications were um, growing and felt like there wasn't really a sustainable or eco-conscious version of what they were um, all of those mm -hmm fashion and kind of like, you know, selling trends and things like that. But we wanted to kind of normalize sustainability. We wanted to make sustainable, um, sorry, sustainability, um, like bold, unique, um, inclusive, diverse, um, digestible for the Gen Z and millennials, and honestly for anyone on our platform. But we wanted it to be like original content. We didn't want it too cookie cutter that we felt like what the brand or the message of sustainability was, you know, in the past, like now we're 50 years later of Earth Day and it's a whole new mm -hmm. life. So with Sustain, we've kind of grown. Um, it's all just a side, uh, it's a side passion project for most of my team members. So for us to kind of like really um, keep at it for the last two years just shows that we really want to fight for our planet. And this is the way we're doing it is through content and storytelling. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about myself and Sustain. That's awesome. Um, so you said you've been around for two years. So you started it while you were in college? Yeah, so it was the yeah. last year of my, so it was senior year of college. And then when I graduated, I just, I, I was like, um, I want this to be my job. I want this to like, um, basically that was the idea of it. Like I wanted to graduate in hopes that sustain the mag would be my job. And in a sense it was, it wasn't a paying job, but it was a career that has um, a passion project that turned into like kind of a career um, that I love doing. And I'm always gonna, um, and we've had at least over, we have six members of um, so far that's been with us for the last two years and we've had writers from all over the world. So that's been a cool, um, awesome. um, as well. That's great. Um, so what topics does your magazine focus on? Like I noticed you have editors for different top like topics. Um, you want to kind of bring us through all of that? Yeah. So we have, um, culture, which is, um, I like to say my section culture does not have an editor yet. Um, so I kind of run that. 
Um, that's more anything that is more newsworthy. Um, then we have beauty and wellness, which our uh, wellness editor Alyssa helps for us run. And then we have our style fashion section, and then we have food. So we really try to cor cor um, kind of like intersect all the kind of lifestyle, um, everyday kind of um, ordeals from into the world and the lens of sustainability. So whether you want some tips on like, you know, vegan friendly recipes, or you want um, to, you know, make a DIY makeup pads uh, we have in mm -hmm. all ranges um, and now we are also doing a monthly digital cover so on top of those sections every month we'll be coming out with a digital cover with a change maker on that cover so tomorrow we're actually launching an earth day one so it's a special edition with an amazing youth act yeah. really excited for that to come out as well and who's on the cover for your earth day issue are you able to say <laughs> um, I won't be mentioning it yet, but she is awesome. She um, is coming out with a book in June, so it's going to be awesome to have someone um, on the cover. We feel like the youth movement is um, kind of like the forefront right now of the climate um, climate change, you know, narrative. Yeah. Um, so how do you see things moving in terms of climate change or just sustainability in general? Like what are some um, patterns you've noticed or some amazing stories that have really stood out to you um, in the recent issues? Yeah, um, I would say definitely right now, currently with like COVID-19, um, climate change, uh, we, we are kind of seeing uh, a shift that, you know, we don't want to say that, like, so climate change is kind of like the, the world is breathing, final, not finally, but like the world is, um, we see changes of like carbon emissions going down, um, air pollution going down. Um, there was actually an article that came out from National Geographic that the kind of like the foot traffic of like Earth's movement, like there's been semi, semi, I can't say the, um, the actual term, but um, there's been people researching the actual foot movement on the Earth and how it's decreasing. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that are like currently decreasing with um, the fact that we're all staying home and we're all kind of like yeah. staying still. Um, so that's been a kind of a huge conversation right now with climate change is that. Um, you know, with these things happening, how can we now move past it? So when we are all kind of like slowly going back to our everyday life, once the pandemic, you know, subsides, or once we find whatever vaccination or whatever that, uh, once we can finally continue to go on, do we want to go back to normal? Like, do we want to go back to where we were? Or do we want to take these changes that are being done are happening to the earth and kind of um, shoot for a better solution once we're out of this and like kind of like fight to keep that um, what's happening to the earth, such as like the air pollution going down. Do we want to keep that um, going stronger and like hopefully all of this keeps decreasing the moment we go back to our daily lives. So I think, I don't know if that makes sense. That was a lot, but we really want to, I feel like understand that change can happen really fast. We are we're seeing that now with the pandemic. So I think we need to think, okay, bigger and that we are able to change fast when it comes to climate change. We can actually fight for it. It doesn't have to be something that takes years to do. Like there's been so much that happened in the world in less than two weeks. So why don't we um, do the same for climate change? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it seems like we've all been able all the governments have been able to coalesce and do things involving COVID-19. And yeah, it'd be great if we took climate change um, to that seriousness. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think it will play out in terms of maybe like revenge pollution, like people um, being so excited about maybe restrictions being lifted that they're like, oh, you know, now I can finally do all the international travel. I can finally buy all those things. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I know I'm struggling with that, so feel free if you don't have any answers. I don't have any, so. 
I mean, I do think right now, at least like you said, a personal thing for me too is because we're kind of at home, mm -hmm. you know, place currently, um, mm -hmm. you know, want to, you know, make my day a little better and maybe go online shop more or go buy, you know, take out mm -hmm. or local businesses who are struggling during this time. So I think there is a balance of like, how do we make ourselves, you know, happier but also support others if we have the means to you know support local businesses but also remember like oh we want to um we want to minimize our waste while we're doing it so i think you know that's kind of like a few tips that were coming out this week on like how to tackle um, climate change during quarantine and basically it just is as small as basically for me it's like if we're going to go do takeout we're going to ask for less utensils or we're going to because you know we're going to be eating at our home we don't need the utensils mm -hmm. the extra whatever that comes with your takeout or when it comes to buying online if you are able to you might be also saving that company um, or brand by asking for less um, packaging if anything like let's say they send you you know, postcards or, you know, some companies send other yeah. things stationary with their, um, with their products. And maybe you can politely ask for just as least minimal um, packaging as you can. So there's like those simple solutions. I know once we're out of this, people are going to want to travel. People are going to want to like, you know, take advantage of the life, life's great, you know, adventures and all of that. But I think we just have to like, kind of have to slow down as well. Um, I think quarantine or at least self-isolation is going to be a norm, not a norm, but it's going to kind of like, this is going to change the perspective of how we live from here on out. Um, that's one thing I think is really going to happen. It's kind of like we're going to be doing the self-isolation, but at a minimum um, for, you know, from here on out. So I think we just have to think of like what's best um, for the planet and just see how small steps we could take um, instead of like running wild and going free once we're able to leave our homes. <laughs> That's yeah. Not my solution. That's more of my opinion, but I'm sure I think it's just more like a mindful, conscious thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I feel you on that. You know, that like we'll be will be changed after this and hopefully we can take some of those things that have been really great about um, this pause and incorporate them throughout our lifestyle. Yeah, um, did you wanna talk more about um, some sustainability tips with the quarantine and COVID-19? I know that's a, something we're all going through, so. Especially for Earth Day and Earth Week, it's just, it's nice to feel like we can be involved still. So obviously tomorrow there is a lot of digital online strikes. So if anyone wants to join those, we just released an article yesterday on that. And we have a post online that you can check out on Sustain. Um, there's a lot of amazing, there's one with Jane Fonda and like Joaquin Phoenix and a lot of amazing um, youth activists um, that we look up to. So we're gonna be joining that. Um, and I'm sure they're gonna be sharing a lot more tips on how we can um, fight all together while at the safety of our home. But some other things is um, basically, um, I want to get the actual website of what I'm mentioning, but there is an awesome, um, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> There's an awesome website called, I think it's called climate um, congress.org. And basically, if you go on there, um, you can put in your zip code. So these are tips. So like if you don't have the means to financial, financially donate or financially, um, you know, vote with your dollar, because right mm -hmm. now for everyone, you can um, go onto this specific website and put in your zip code and it will give you the specific congressperson of your area and the phone number and email on top of a script that you can send to them on how to tackle climate change and how they can put it into their policy. So that's one thing I like to tell people that um, policy can go a long way and that's a free way to kind of, you know, make change and, or change and you can do it at the comfort of your own home. Some other ways from light lifestyle ways would be um, for us here at my place, uh, we are having our little home garden. So like, you know, produce is very precious right now. I feel like people don't really want to go out shopping all the time because it's, you know, mm -hmm. kind of 
putting ourselves into harm's way. But if you were able to start your own home garden, there's easy ways to do it. I know Package Free Shop online has a self-starter kit and it's an amazing jar. The seeds are all there. You just have to water it. So that's something you can buy online. Um, I know some Home Depots are still available and open that you could also do shipping for like soil and seeds. Um, some other little tips would be um, saving your electricity. And this is my favorite one is because we're home right now, we're all kind of like consumed and connected and, you know, I have so many things plugged in, but if there is a way for us at least either once a day or once a week uh, with our roommates or our family, um, kind of convince everyone to turn off and connect for one hour or more um, mm -hmm. and just enjoy like the natural light or something like that. So that's just like small ways of like, you know, changing, um, your lifestyle a little bit at home, but also conserving like energy or voting with your dollar or talking to your local congressperson and politician. Um, those are some facts that we came up with and that will also come out on our Instagram and online on our site this week. Yeah, totally. And I know um, myself, I just had, you know, more time and I'm here during the day. So for example, I'm able to like put out my laundry to air dry because I know I'll be home in time or I know if it gets too windy, I can like just watch it right there. So it all works out, you know, and so that's been nice to be able to like incorporate another sustainability activity now that I'm home and yeah, I'm around. <laughs> we have more time. Um, so what are some other actions um, people can take um, to tackle climate change or sustainability? Um, what are you seeing on the horizon in terms of lifestyle sort of activities? Um, I'm seeing a lot of people um, right now are taking the initiative, at least online, um, to mend their clothes or repairing old clothes, um, which I think is great. They're learning a lot more um, about like some people are learning how to sew for the first time and how to hem their own clothes because, you know, we don't want that's one thing we want to, when it comes to being sustainable, we want to be resourceful and we want to kind of like make things last forever. Um, so people are really taking the time to do that as well as like making their own, you know, bread starter and like making bread from scratch and making like nut milks from scratch. Um, I think with so much time on our hands, we can kind of like not just be sustainable for our bodies and like gives our, give our bodies nutrition and um, nourishment, but also kind of you know make things at home and not have to contribute to more plastic waste um and going out and also i've been having a hard time um you know finding toilet paper so for an example a bidet this could if people have the chance um, the financial means to invest in a bidet and then you never have to buy toilet paper ever again and i know that was a very you know hard time the last two weeks that was like a shortage of all toilet paper and paper goods um, so these are like some things I'm seeing people do, and this is some things I'm personally doing. Um, and I just actually got the website if anyone wanted to do it, but it's citizensclimatelobby.org. I can also write mm. it. That's an awesome website to easily, you know, you don't have to come up with something on the top of your head. It's, they give it all the information on how to, you know, her, not like, you know, call your um, local politician or congressman. Um, so yeah, those are things that I've been doing. Um, and yeah, I think to, and then again, like I mentioned, the digital strikes tomorrow would be a good help as well. Yeah. And where do people go to find more information about um, the climate change digital strikes that are going on tomorrow? Yeah. So there is one um, at Future Coalition. Um, we also tagged all of them in our post prior to our, our post that we posted today on Instagram. Um, this okay, is great. our, um, they're awesome. So I think the big one is the one um, that's Future Coalition. That's the one with Jane Fonda and Joaquin Phoenix, for those that just joined. Oh, yes. Citizens, um, citizensclimatelobby.org. Um, so just add the climate. Sorry, I saw someone write, wrote it down. Yes. Oh, yeah. Citizensclimatelobby.org. Yeah, they're awesome. And um, sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, where could people find more information about the digital strikes and stuff like tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, they're going on all day. So that would be awesome. Um, 
I think it's a live Zoom event, which is cool. Um, I personally have, you know, I feel like Zoom events right now are really popular. We might be doing some soon. Um, I think IG live events are awesome. There's a lot of those going on tomorrow as well. Oh, Tushi Bidet. Yeah, it's been really um, nice that everyone's around and able to like, connect like this. Um, you know, it's a kind of a rare opportunity. And I think I've learned, you know, like some conferences I was supposed to go to were canceled and then they were done online digitally. And at first I was a little sad that I wasn't like, I had one in Austin and I was like, Oh, I'm so excited to visit Austin. But like, you know, the conferences are fine, you know, like I still learn the same amount. And so what other things do you think that we'll take out of this that maybe it was changed, but for the most part, you know, maybe we could do with that change in order to, avoid some of the climate impact of, um, you know, what we think is necessary. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think events in the sustainable, you know, space has been really popular. I know Sustain, we've posted, I mean, we host a lot of events in New York, but at the same time, when you think about it, when it comes down to it, unless you're using a hundred percent, you know, we, we've worked with world centric for our um, birthday event in February, which was awesome. But unless if you don't use like sustainable products and you're, you know, it could be kind of like a huge party of just like actual, you know, single use waste that we're creating. And when we come down to it, I feel like these digital virtual events are in a sense, um, a little bit more eco-friendly and hopefully we see more of them because they're also more cost efficient. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it's a good way for people to learn and who don't have the means to maybe go out to a huge city like New York or Austin or Seattle, where a lot of these conferences are happening, they can just, you know, log in onto their phones and like learn so much more. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of another um, event for anyone that's interested, Slow Factories hosting for the next two weeks on um, Friday, a one hour um, session on Zoom to learn about what sustainability and circular economy is. So that's another cool thing. There's a lot of educational um, sustainable um, platforms that are giving back free, you know, classes right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, talk about in our time here today? Just definitely everyone um, enjoy Earth Day tomorrow and just remember that, yes, Earth Day is every day. Um, and yeah, keep on the lookout for our digital cover tomorrow and you can join along our um, rest of our events as well. And of course, I know World Centric is having a lot of cool um, other IG lives the rest of the week too. So definitely tune in on that and I will as well. But no, I oh, great. Yeah, we have, we're hosting week talks all week long as part of our eco-social um, live series. So come back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I will talk with Charlie Harold, the director of membership at Scraps Mile High, which is a compost pickup service in Denver, Colorado. That's really cool. It's all done on bike, very DIY. Love it. So it was so cool to talk with you and, um, you know, please keep up the excellent work. Um, I love that magazines like yours are around and existing and it's great to see that more coming mainstream. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for also inviting me on this and for having me. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day and thanks to everyone. Thank Bye. You. Bye.